morning sun. Loudly?
everyone separate position. Still in this. We are going to add. This is PCR. Like we take a specific, we take an artificial segment of it, and then we attach artificial nucleus. We use. Now we attach masa before getting here.
Good afternoon, ma'am. Repeating, uh, they would have keep some more uh, uh, without repeating it with with it, then it will it would have very good. And uh, that uh, petrol fraud detector one, uh, it is uh, very great. Actually, that uh, that uh, item is really inventive. Yes, in the project yeah. you like the most, ma'am. Yes, I like the project most, and even this uh, they are demonstrating about uh, uh, the uh, cyber uh, cyber things and uh, uh, robots. These are also nice, and uh, the last one I like it is uh, uh, that is the bio bar. About bio bar, they are explaining this was uh, very very good. I like it. Uh, on the whole, I like it. Thank you. Thank you.
morning everyone now i'm going to tell about definition of escalator the benefits of escalator are many they have the capacity to move large number of people over to you gaganashri good morning everyone my name is gaganashri from 5c today i'm telling about escalator in a real escalator a pair of chains rope around two pairs of gears rotate to move steps along a large armature structure called truss in cases the entire mechanism to connect the floors over to you minakshi an escalator is a moving staircase which carries people between floors of a building or structure it consists of a motor driven chains of individually linked steps on a track with cycle on a pair of track which keep the st- step tread horizontal the us invented the first escalator in 1859 they called the invention as a revolving stairs on that note please allow me to hand over to my partner gaganashri for further details of escalator. I did this escalator with cardboard, paper, tissue rolls and gun, hot gun glue. Thank you. Welcome all to the world of robotics. I am Sanchana from Grade 3. I am very excited today. You know why? Because I like to arrange the parts of machines and to watch how it works. Arranging, designing, operating the parts of machines is called robotics. Here I come with one of the robotic method that is Bristol Bot. Bristol Bot is a small robot made by combining a toothbrush head and a vibrating pager motor. The vibrations of the pager motor travel down the bristles and cause the brush to scoot and spin on the flat surface. Bristol Bot materials are pager motor, battery and attachment materials. Bristol Bot is a system that Bristol Bot system has been used in all levels of education to promote science, technology, engineering and math both in and out of the classroom. Bristol Bot is an easy and cost effective introduction into the world of robotics. By using the Bristol Bot in the classroom, students can begin to learn the process of solving problems with critical thinking and innovative solutions. Now let's watch how it works. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Shrenika. My name is Tanisha. Today we are going to talk about a spectroscope. A spectroscope is an instrument that helps scientists to determine the chemical composition of visible source of light. The materials required to make your own DIY CD spectroscope are a, a paper tube or a plastic bottle, black and white paper, scissors and glue and tape. Now Tanisha is going to tell you how to make it. I took a plastic bottle and cut the top and bottom part. Then I made a 45 degree slide on one side to put the CD and cut the rectangle on opposite side of the bottle. I then took a white sheet and cut two circles. I then cut a rectangle in one circle and sticked it on the top side of the bottle with transparent tape. I sticked the other circle on the bottom of the bottle. Then I painted the bottle black and after it dry, placed the CD in the slide which I made earlier. Uses of spectroscope are A spectroscope can analyze the properties of light. Scientists use spectroscope to look at the light from stars and learn what they are made of. Now I'm going to tell you how to use it. Take a CD spectroscope, point the white slit towards the sky or any visible source of light. You will see a spectrum of light which looks like a rainbow when you view through the viewing hole. 
the the C on the C D inside or uh, inside the spectroscope. The the C D inside the spectroscope acts like a prism and separates white light into different colors because the C D is a mirror object which has tracks and pits that are evenly spaced on the C D which reflect light to human eyes. Isaac Newton was the first person to tell that white light has all the colors in it. He showed how white light becomes a rainbow when it when it passes through a prism. Each color pattern we see is made up of its own wavelength. Now what is a wavelength? Just like ocean has waves, even light has waves. It has peaks and valleys. A distance between two peaks is called a wavelength. Each color has its own wavelength. Red has its highest wavelength and violet has the lowest wavelength. Orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet have the wavelength between red and violet. Now I'm going to tell you the uses of spectroscope. Spectroscope is used by astronomers and scientists to know the chemical composition as well as the temperature of different objects. Spectroscope is kept inside a special telescope to know the chemical composition of different Things. Astronomers use spectroscope to know the chemical composition of different planets, stars, galaxies, etc. I, I match it with the ones on the periodic table. What is a periodic table? All the chemicals that are discovered by data are kept on a special table. This table is table is called a periodic table. Dimitri Mendeleev invented uh, was a Russian scientist who invented the spectroscope. Now you know how to use a spectroscope, how to make it, the materials required, what is a periodic table, who invented it, what is a wavelength, etc. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Good morning everyone. Welcome to a sci-fi project on acid rain. Me and Arjun are excited to share our findings with you. Acid rain has many benefits like CO2 soil emissions and producing soil organic carbon accumulation. Its harmful effects are significant. It damages trees, fresh waters and soils. It destroys insects and aquatic life. It also causes infrastructure damage to steel structures and weathering of stone buildings. Moreover, the pollutants of acid rain can lead to respiratory diseases and exacerbating existing conditions. Arjun, can you elaborate the harmful effects of acid rain on human health? Yes, Vedant. Acid rain itself is not harmful to humans, but the pollutants that cause it, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides, can lead to respiratory problems such as asthma and bronchitis. These pollutants can also aggravate existing conditions, making it essential to address acid rain's impact on human health. Thank you, Arjun. Let's join our hands and protect our planet from acid rain. Good morning everyone. I am Vaishka with my friends Sahasra and Parnika. Today we are doing the project generating power from windmills. The windmill generator. This incredible innovation harnesses the power of wind to produce electricity, creating jobs and simulating local economies, offering a sustainable solution to our planet's energy needs. It is used for running small electrical appliances, mainly in remote areas with no power supply. It helps in water heating, pumping, electric livestock or lightning or any kind of small electronic system needed to control or monitor remote equipment. But that's not all. Windmill generators also produce electricity, creating jobs and simulating local economies. They are a symbol of innovation and progress. Wind kinetic energy. Wind flows across the blades causing them to rotate. Mechanical energy. The rotation of the blades is converted into mechanical energy turning the main shaft gearbox. The mechanical energy is increased in the speed of the gearbox amplifying the rotation generator. The high speed of rotation is converted into electric energy of the main shaft. Then the energy is converted into mechanical energy giving the light to glow. 
With the windmill generator, we can reduce our reliance on fossil fuels, decrease greenhouse gas emissions and mitigate climate changes. It's a clean, renewable source of energy that's available everywhere from urban cities to rural landscapes. So the materials used in this project are main shaft, rotor blades, DC motor, connection wires and LED lights. When we rotate the main shaft, the rotor blades spin and then the DC motor converts mechanical energy into electrical energy and then the connection wires dispatches the light to glow. We will show you the model. When we rotate the main shaft, the rotor blades spin and the, and the DC motor converts it and then the light will glow. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Anish from Great Sun B. I am Janish. I am Jasjit. Today we are going to talk about hologram. Imagine a world where communication and entertainment comes alive in three dimensions, where distant objects and people seem enough close to touch. Holograms are a picture made by complex. Holograms is a whole object showing in three dimensions. Holograms were invented in 1947 but only perfected after the invention of lasers in 1960. Far more impressive are large holograms that take the form of ghostly 3D moving figures that you can walk around to see from all angles. Hol uh, what else can we use hologram for? Let's take a closer look at what are they. How many hologram do you have in your pocket? If you are carrying any money, the answer is probably quite a few. Are those shiny metallic patterns with ghostly images floating inside them that they can defeat counterfeiters? They are very hard to reproduce, so they help. To stop people printing on banknote credit card, usually have hologram on them too, and software packages also frequently have. Oh. We can identify fake and real note by hologram. The one at the hydrophonics. Hydrophonics is a simple growth of plants without soil. So uh, the plants need light, water, carbon dioxide and oxygen in the root zone. The term hydrophonics is originated from the Greek word meaning walking water. It is a technique of growing plants without soil. Over to you, Srinika. The advantages of hydrophonics, conservation of water and nutrients, no excess use of fertilizers, no use of pesticides and other chemicals. It can be grown anywhere as it requires very less space. It minimizes loss of nutrients, higher yield and plants are healthier and mature faster. These are the examples of hydrophonics, vertical farming, step farming, backyard farming, horizontal farming. These are the examples of hydrophonics. Disadvantages of hydrophonics. The interior cost of investment is high. The requirement of technical know-how. Process is due to time consuming. Waterborne infection of plants. Crops grown in hydrophonics. Tomatoes, pepper, cucumber. Squash, berries, melons and citrus fruits. Lettuce, spinach, billy and beans. Thank you. Ecosystem. Ecosystem is a geographical area where plants and animals combine together to create a form of life with weather and landscapes. Ecosystem has both biotic and abiotic. Biotic means living things such as plants, animals and trees. And abiotic has non-living things such as temperature, carbon dioxide, oxygen, sunlight, minerals, etc. We have three types of ecosystems. They are terrestrial, aquatic and artificial or man-made. In terrestrial, we have forest ecosystems, grassland ecosystem and desert ecosystem. In aquatic, we have oceans and lakes. In artificial, we have aquarium and in man-made, we have cornfield. They are in biotic, we have organic matter, living things, oysters, blue crabs and jellyfish. In, ab in abiotic, we have climate, non-living things, sunlight, temperature, and soil. In ecosystems, we have dead organisms, bees, aquatic plants, fungi, animals, and etc. Thank you. 
Good morning everyone. Today me and Mol and my friend Divya Amrit and Saranj have made a project on hydraulic bridge. Hydraulic bridge is a type of movable bridge that uses hydraulic system to lift and lower the bridge deck, allowing water borne vessels to pass underneath. Our project aims to design a scale model of hydraulic bridge, showcasing its potential in real world scenarios, demonstrating its functions. The objective of this project is to design and build a working scale model on hydraulic bridge, demonstrate the principles of hydraulic systems in bridge construction, showcase the advantages and benefits of hydraulic bridges in various applications, develop problem solving skills and critical thinking skills through the design and building process of this project. Over to you Divya Amrit. Thank you, Sarans. Hydraulic bridges have various practical applications, including allowing waterborne vessels to pass underneath while maintaining road and rail connectivities, facilitating the crossing of waterways in urban and rural areas, serving as a symbol of innovative engineering and architectural design, supporting military operations and uh, supporting military operations and logistics. Thank you. So let's on it. As you can see, the smoke goes in through the holes, through the holes, <coughs> and then will be removed through the pipes. <coughs> so basically, the motor with the fan in it <coughs> pulls the smoke in, uh, smoke in, and then the smoke goes through a filtration system. <coughs> As you can see here, and then the clean air exits. So you may ask what are the advantages of a smoke absorber. The advantages of the smoke absorber is that it removes harmful particles from the air and it also removes the bad odor from the air and it also reduces the chances of getting a respiratory problem. So where can we install this machine? We can install this ma machine in places like homes, shops, uh, automobiles and uh, factories where they produce harmful gases. So why only this project, not other projects? We chose this project because uh, we observed that many of the people are getting respiratory problems and the smoke also causes global warming which is not good for the earth's surface and it also endangers the wildlife. So that's why we made this project Smoke Absorber. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Samanvit. Now I am telling about the robotic hand. The robotic hand is made up of A4 sheet color paper and it is automatically, magically, we made our hands of robotic. Over to you, Ritwik. The robotic hand is made up of A4 sheet color paper, thread and couple of straws which is cut into small and medium sizes of straws. Over to you, Suvansh. Advantages of robotic hand are they don't forget steps or they get, don't get tired. Over to you, Arvind. The robotic hand just, is just like a adult's hand which controls all the movements, all the fingers in all movements, just like a realistic hand. Over to you, Bonsai. The robotic hand is used to mimic the, the human hand. Over to you, Jay. The robotic hand works similar way as the human hand. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Karan Pari from Grade A Dev with my companion Rohit. Today's our project is on greenhouse. A greenhouse is a building with glass roof and <coughs> walls. A, a green, we can, in a greenhouse we can grow plants like cauliflower and tomatoes. The uses of greenhouse are The uses of greenhouse in many ways but one of the ways is protection from animals or high temperature and there are advantages also of greenhouse and one of the advantages is great production of plants means plants can grow more better than farm but because of the modern methods and nice facility given by farmers to plants Thank you in a greenhouse, uh, in a greenhouse, climatic conditions are uh, uh, controlled in, uh, with the help of cooling and uh, uh, cooling and hot air system. In in a greenhouse, there will be cooling and uh, cool air and hot air systems, and oxygen will be there in it. Thank you. 
the heart uh, the world heart day is celebrated on 29 september and uh, as long as our heart has a oxygen supply uh, it it will not stop beating even if the heart is disconnected from our body thank you Good morning to one and all present here. I am Kirti. She is Tarani from grade 10. Today we are going to explain the respiratory system. Well, the main parts of respiratory system are tra the nostril, trachea, rings of cartilage, bronchi, bronchioles, alveoli. Well, when we breathe, the air passes to the trachea, then through the rings of cartilage. These rings of cartilage helps the air not to collapse. The air is sectored into two parts called bronchi, which is further expanded into bronchioles. These bronchioles have pulmonary vein and pulmonary artery. The alveoli are uh, attached to bronchioles. So, alveoli is very rich in oxygen and blood capillaries is rich in carbon dioxide. The oxygen present in the alveoli will diffuse into blood capillaries and the uh, carbon dioxide present in the blood capillaries will diffuse into alveoli. This process happens to the help of diffusion. You can see the expansion and contraction right in the lungs. This is due to the alveoli. The alveoli expand when uh, it is filled with oxygen and it contracts when the carbon dioxide goes out of the nose. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Charita. And my name is Chandra. I, we are from grade 10A. So today we are here to explain about the topic hemodialysis. Usually, our kidney filters around 180 liters of blood per day. So, when it is unable to do so, the doctors opt for hemodialysis. It may be due to any reason like renal diseases or uh, kidney disorder or anything. The doctors opt to uh, hemodialysis. So, what is hemodialysis? Hemodialysis is a process wherein the unfiltered blood is taken in from the hand with the help of a tube into the dialysis machine where the purification takes place and the waste materials, whatever is there, are sent into the container beside it. After this, the blood is mixed with a dialysate solution which has the vitamins, minerals and all the required materials for the blood. It is mixed with a dialysate solution and sent back into the hand with the help of a tube from the dialysis machine. Now my companion Charanram will explain in detail about hemodialysis. So now, uh, usually in the process of hemodialysis, uh, first, uh, from the hand, there is a point called the arteriovenous fistula, which is a point where with the help of a needle, both uh, the artery and the vein are joined with each other, and then the blood, the unfiltered blood, is sent into the dialyzer machine. In the dialyzer machine, with the help of hyperfiltration, we choose a pressure gradient to make sure that all the waste materials are pushed out from the blood, and also with the help of uh, normal filtration uh, all the waste materials and the toxins present in the blood are moved out into a different container uh, then uh, the blood which is now deficient in various nutrients and vitamins um, and along with it uh, the dialysate solution is mixed in the dialyzer machine and then it moves back into the blood this is the process of uh, hemodialysis uh, except hemodialysis, there is another method called peritoneal dialysis. In peritoneal dialysis, it uses uh, um, it uses uh, a lining of the stomach called the peritoneum, and with the help of the peritoneum. Uh, all the waste material is moved out into a sac and then uh, uh, the uh, dialysate solution is moved into the peritoneum. Uh, and this is the process of uh, hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. Thank you. Good morning everyone, my name is Vashit and my constituent is Sajid. Today I am going to say about period table as usual you know. In, uh, 18, in 1869, the period table was invented by uh, Dmitry Mendeleev. On this periodic table, on this periodic table, the elements are listed in order, in atomic number and elements, in same order and in same period. In the left corner, there are number of protons. In the right corner, there are atomic weight. In the bottom, there are names. In the center, there are symbols. They are separated into three parts, metals, non-metals and semi-metals. Yeah. In horizontal areas, it, it goes left left to and right, uh, left to and right, as you shall see, and uh, the uh, vertically columns, periods and vertical columns. They are separated into four blocks. 
red box is known as s block green block green box is known as f block and blue box is known as d block and yellow box is known as p block thank you good morning everyone i am ritika yamini rojita and sneha today we are all here to do a small pharmaceutical revolution a story of science research and evolution okay let's start with the ayurvedic era which is from the 1500 bc to the 800 bc in the ayurveda we mix certain herbs to create medicines on the spot to cure a disease but this had several different disadvantages so this had led to uh, making an idea of ready made medicines which after several evolutions had led to allopathic medicine even though it has several different uh, stages the first first main stage is making a formula so this is the formula of paracetamol here the here is the final product of paracetamol so paracetamol is also known as acetaminophen paracetamol was invented by john von mari in the year 1983 so next we have the clinical trials after the formula is done they after the formula is made they they'll do it tested on before selling the medicine on the market they'll test it on animals such as chimpanzees or uh, rats mainly because their dna is very similar to humans there, there are other animals also here you can see so af after the animal is stable they'll move it on the human volunteers good morning everyone my name is netra my name is samanvi from grade 5a today our project is vermic compost vermic compost can be vermic compost is an organic process in which earthworm species convert biodegradable waste into manure thus it is used in organic farming bed method this is an easy method in which beds of organic matter are prepared vermic compost can be finely divided peel like material with porosity drainage water holding capacity excellent nutrient status and many more thereby resulting the phyoc chemical characters required for the soil fertility and plant growth vermic compost can be used in organic farming and small scale sustainable farming vermic compost vermic compost is an excellent nutrient rich organic fertilizer which helps to grow well and give better yields Vermic compost is a very time-taking process. It almost takes six months to convert the waste into organic matter. Thank you. The good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sharia Dutt, and my name is A Daniel from Grade Six B. Today we are doing a project on drip irrigation. Do you know what irrigation is? Irrigation is the supply of water to crops or land to help growth. Drip, drip, drip irrigation is an efficient method of irrigation of plants in which water flows through special through special pipes is called drip pipes uh, the water then flows through the tank and through the drip pipes and drips through small holes or openings present on the drip pipes which are here here and here the wa the water then goes through the soil and reaches the part of the plant where the water and the nutrients are the most important which are the roots uh, it has a potential to save water and nutrients the it, the goal of this type of irrigation is to minimize evaporation and place water directly to the root zone of the plant there are few advantages of drip irrigation shalya can you explain me to them Uh, the first advantage is easy installation drip irrigation systems do not need any excavating and are <coughs> very easy to install they rarely disrupt the landscape of the installation and can be moved and are not permanent unlike other irrigation systems this is because only tubes are needed to be installed the second uh, met the second advantage is reduces weeds drip irrigation systems only drip water slowly through the roots to the roots through the soil to the roots of the plant which means no puddles are formed one of the most used irrigation system are sprinklers sprinklers supply water sprinklers spray water onto the plant as well as the surrounding areas this forms puddles and inc and uh, increases the growth of weeds The next advantage is water conservation which Daniel will be explaining. 
Using drip irrigation, water is spread directly onto the ground unlike many other irrigation systems that spread up and over an area. Since drip irrigation systems rely on a lower than a normal water pressure, you can use them in locations where water may not be seem um, where water may not be seem as good. The next advantage is soil conservation. As drip irrigation systems deliver water slowly, there is less risk of soil erosion and uh, nutrients are saved. The last advantage is plant health. Uh, plants also receive a consistent supply of water, keeping them strong and healthy. Uh, drip irrigation systems also decrease the risk of underwatering and overwatering. Over time, this saves uh, money on water bills and uh, this method is eco-friendly. Now Daniel will be continuing. Why don't farmers use it? The sun, uh, the sun, the sun can affect the tubes used for drip irrigation. Uh, used for drip irrigation, shortening their lifespan. This process is uh, this process is expensive and slow. If if the water is if the water is not uh, properly maintained and the equipment and uh, properly not uh, properly not is maintained it can cause into clogging uh, the plastic pipes used for drip irrigation often suffer from rodent damage requiring replacement of the whole tube and increasing expenses that's all for now that's all about drip irrigation i hope you have a nice day Good morning. Welcome to Science Fair. My name is Advet from Grade 3B. This is my science project Bubble Shooter. Now let me explain to you how does it work. I have poured soap water in the bottle. Once I switch on the DC motor, then the straw framework starts to rotate, which is dipped in water. During rotation, the small circles stick on every straw, pick up the bubble from soap water. Now, when I switch on the fan, which is operated by 9 volts DC motor and a 9 volts battery, the, the, then the air forces the bubble in every small circle to shoot into big bubble. When talk, uh, to conclude, to, uh, to conclude, uh, I when. Uh, to conclude, when doing this project, I learned how the air forces small, small, small bubbles to shoot into big bubbles. This is my first science project and I learned how to make a working science model with steps, materials, procedure, application and conclusion. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Daksha Reddy. My name is Divika Reddy. Today we are here, here to, to talk about seed germination. I am excited to explore the fascinating world of seed germination with you. Seed germination is not just a fundamental process in plant biology. It is the beginning of life for every plant we see around us. The process that starts with something small and seemingly lifeless as a seed. Through my project, I have delved into how seeds awaken and begin the journey of becoming mature plants. Join me as I unravel the key factors in playing this process. Now. Now let's dive into the incredible journey of seed germination together. It starts with the seed absorbing water which softens the outer shell. Then, then grows the first root called a radical which comes out of the seed. A shoot growing upwards seeking sunlight. Different seeds have specific needs like water, sunlight and air to germinate. Understanding this process helps farmers grow healthy crops and gardeners grow beautiful plants. I hope you enjoy learning about seed germination. Now here is my friend Divka who will conclude about seed germination. 
Today I am here to conclude this topic of seed germination. In conclusion, the seed germination is a phenolytic biological process in wine, ranging application in agriculture, horticulture, environmental conservation, scientific research, and education. By understanding the principles of seed germination, we can improve food security, restore natural habitats, and advise our knowledge of plant biology. Now let us see the importance of seed germination. Healthy seed germination leads to the strong plants which are essential for our growing our food. Plants from germinated seeds improve soil quietly and present erosion. More plants means more oxygen to eliminate a change. Thus seed germination plays a vital role that installs plant growth. Thank you. Good morning, this is Ryan from 3C. Today, I'm excited to share you with an interesting topic that combines chemistry and fun. Invisible ink with lemon juice. Have you ever wondered how spices communicate secret messages or how ancient civilizations kept their writings hidden? Well, today we will explain how lemon juice, a common household, Ingredient can be used to write invisible messages that magically appear when exposed. Let's dive into the science behind this fascinating phenomenon and discover how it works. Over to you, Shivam. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shivam. Now I'm going to tell about invisible ink with lemon juice. Lemon juice contains organic compounds that remain invisible when applied to paper. This makes perfect for writing messages that are hidden to make die. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sarva from Grade 3C. Today I am telling about invisible ink with lemon juice. In confusion, lemon juice with ink is fun and educational way to learn about chemistry. This experiment not only entertains, but it also teaches us about chemical reactions and the properties of substance. It's a practice of blend of science and Science and creativity that sparkle the curiosity and demonstrates the practical applications. Thank you. Over to you, Jyotvika. Good morning, everyone. My name is Shruddhika from Grade 3B. Today, I am going to share my project, Invisible Ink with Lemon Juice. Materials used. Lemon juice, iron box or candle, small bowl, plain paper. Procedure. Squeeze the juice of the lemon into a small bowl. Using the cotton strap, swap as a pencil. Write a secret message on the paper. Then let the paper dry completely. Bring your heat source close to the paper. Result. After the following procedure, the secret message magically begins to appear. Conclusion. Lemon juice contains carbon compounds. These compounds are pretty much colorless at room temperature. But heat can break down these compounds releasing the carbon. If the carbon comes in contact with air, a process called oxidation occurs and the substance turns lighter dark brown. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Bisai and uh, my topic is peptic ulcer and stomach cancer. So peptic ulcers are the open source that develop on the inside lining of your stomach and the upper layer of your small intestine and symptoms of peptic ulcers are uh, abdominal discomfort or pain, nausea, pain radiating at the back, a burning or gnawing sensation similar to hunger pains and the main causes of peptic ulcers are uh, the main causes of peptic ulcers are infection with the hel bacterium helicobacter pylori and uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen, stress and spicy foods do not cause peptic ulcers. And uh, the prevention of peptic ulcer is to ha have, a ma ha have to maintain a healthy lifestyle, have to maintain a healthy lifestyle with eating, a eating food vegetables and balanced diet like uh, whole grains thank you
Good morning, everyone. My name is Rihan from Grade Seven. Today, I am doing on the science project on the topic copper electroplating. Let's know about copper electroplating. Copper electroplating is a process that copper gets deposed from a layer of copper onto metal surface by using batteries and electricity. Electricity causes copper to dissolve in the sulfate solution, and the sulfate solution deposes copper on the cathode. Then the pure copper deposes on the cathode. Electroplating is also applied in many industries such as electronics for printed circuit boards, automotive improving the appearance of the aluminium wheels, medical and laboratory equipments also. Electroplating also has many uses such as electroplating can also make the cheap metals look very expensively like ornaments and utensils. In electricity conductivity, as the electricity as the copper is a good conductor of electricity because it has very less patina and it is used for electrical and electronic industries. El co the copper electroplating of a metal can help protect the metal from the corrosion. Thank you. Good morning. Have you ever wondered the difference between pneumonia and bronchitis and what role does genetics play in causing asthma? Well, today in our project, we will be talking about lung diseases. Bronchitis. Bronchitis is the inflammation of the bronchial passage. Asthma. Asthma is a chronic respiratory disease caused by the inflammation and the narrow down of the airways. Now we would like to show you how an asthmatic lung works. Pneumonia. Pneumonia is a lung infection which causes the air, the air sacs to inflame which causes them to be filled with mucus or pus. A fact about pneumonia is that some people with milder cases of pneumonia might not even realize it and continue with their daily activities. This condition is known as walking pneumonia. Tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a contagious bacterial infection which causes symptoms such as cough, fever and weight loss. Thank you. Materials used Audio you know, motor driver, Bluetooth module, motor and chases, power supply, and smartphone or tablet. Now let us see how does a voice control car work. The Arduino you know sends voice commands to the vehicle to move it forward, backward, left or right via Bluetooth. Then the Arduino you know operates the gear motors to move it accordingly. Move forward. Move backward. Turn right. Turn left. Thank you. We take Dolo for every minor pain, fever, cold or cough. But do you know that it can cause harm to your body? This is me Harshita of grade 10 telling you actions of various brands of analgesics. An uh, analgesics is nothing but painkillers. If we take painkillers frequently, frequently, there are many side effects like stomach ache, dry mouth, lightheadedness, gastritis, nausea or vomiting, dizziness, uh, constipation and frequent usage of painkillers can also cause to choking of a person which leads to death of a person. Here I have done an experiment to see which painkiller dissolves the most in water and which dissolves the least. Here I have paracetamol, flumol and dolo. As you can see flumol has dissolved the most without taking any sediments left. But dolo over here does not dissolve and it leaves sediments which can cause patches in the stomach, kidneys, pancreas or livers and it also takes a long time to excrete out. So from this we can conclude that flumol is the best uh, painkiller present and dolo is the least uh, effective painkiller. Thank you. 
गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई क्षितिज ऑफ क्लास नाइन अलॉन्ग विद माई फ्रेंड वैष्णवी आई हेयर टू टेल आ साइफारी प्रोजेक्ट कम्बूचा डू नॉट कम्बूचा इज इफ नॉट विल टेल यू Kombucha is a sweet fizzy fermented tea which has probiotics and friendly bacteria present in it. These microorganisms help in boosting a person's health. And kombucha is also in go- is also called the gut fuel. In recent years, people have started using kombucha as a helpful alternative to conventional fizzy drinks and sodas. Some studies suggest that probiotic bacteria which is present in kombucha have various health benefits like managing type 2 diabetes. protecting against cancer strengthening immune system etc kombucha was first brewed in china and later got spread all over russia and japan which later got popular in the late 20th century thank you good morning everyone my name is meghna this is akshara and this is vishwak and this is our project dwps curiosity Our car uses an ultrasonic sensor with radio frequencies to detect any objects near it. An ultrasonic sensor is a sensor that can be used with to detect within 250 cm. The parts used in this project are Arduino Uno, L29 3D motor driver, a servo, ultrasonic sensor and a battery box. Now Akshara will be telling the applications of the robot. This can be used as an educational tool and in airports where it can carry luggages and also in he- health care uh, as a health care assistant where it can carry expensive medicines and also as a home assistant robot and a cave explorer This project is designed and demonstrated to explain basic principles of robotics and programming We have worked really hard on this project. We have spent 625 hours on this project which is equivalent to 25 25 days. We have written over 20,000 lines of code out of which only 361 lines of code were actually successful. Now we will showcase the project on how it works. It detects objects within 30 cm. Hello everyone my name is Anika my name is Shloka and we are from grade 9a we are here to present a project on the plant cell have you ever wondered what's the smallest unit of a body yes it's none other than a cell hello hello everyone and welcome to our educational series on bio today we'll be diving into the fascinating world of plant cell plant cells are the building blocks of plants they have some unique structures and functions that set that set them apart from animal cells These parts are cell wall, vacuole and chloroplasts. Chloroplasts are specialized organelles found in some parts of the fa- plant cells. It it's also found in an algae and fungi. It helps in the process of photosynthesis. This conver- this takes light energy and converts into chemical energy which in turn is stored in the form of glucose. It also helps in the production of pigments and also helps in protein synthesis. Cell wall. Cell wall is a rigid and a protective layer found in different types of organelles like cell, plant cell, fungi, and bacteria. It serves on several important functions like regulation of regulation pro- regulation of protection of osmosis, storage, cell to cell communication, and etc. Vacuole. Vacuole. Vacuole is a membrane membrane bounded organelle found in different types of cells, including plant cell, fungal, and bacteria. It helps in the storage of nutrients and waste products. In plants, it helps in the storage of water. It's often found in large size in plant cells. Other than these, there are other parts which are in the plant cells. Like this is mitochondria. It helps in the production of ATP and is also called the powerhouse of the cell. And these are ribosomes. It helps. It, it helps. Uh, it takes instruction of DNA and fol- uh, follows their instructions. This is a cell. This is a cell membrane. It controls what enters and exits a plant cell. It's basically like a barrier to the plant cell. And this is the cytoplasm. It's like a jelly-like structure which is inside the inside the nucleus and within the cell membrane. These are endoplasmic reticulum. There are mainly two types of endoplasmic reticulum: rough ER and smooth ER. This is a nucleus, and and these these is a gal galgi apparatus. It is basically, it's basically like a stack of pancakes. Thank you.
Good morning. I am Arjun from 9A. Today, I am going to talk about the fundamental unit of life. Just like how our surroundings are made up of molecules and atoms, we too are made up of small particles known as cells. Cells can be of different types. Cells, uh, cells was when Robert Hooke was looking at a cork cell, which is made of non-living things through a microscope, he found the cell for the first time. Cell in Latin means cell in Latin means little room. Even though cells are minute, they make a lot of difference in our daily life. But cells can be of different types too, like how cells, sex cells, work different from fat cells, and how multiple organisms are made up of one or more cells. The ones, the unicellular organisms, are the organisms that are made up of one cells, and the cell performs all of their, all of their functions, such such as production of nutrients and proteins. And unicellular, multicellular organisms such as octopus have multiple cells that perform different functions. Same cells which perform the same function form tissues. Same tissues that form same functions form an organ. And multiple organs with different functions form an organ system. Organ system plus bones plus blood plus muscles form an organism. Thank you. Good morning everyone. Today I, Parakruta and Akanksha are here to explain about the topic formation of gallstones. Firstly, what are gallstones? Gallstones are the hardened deposits of bile that are formed in the gall bladder. They may range in size as small as grain of sand to as large as golf ball. Symptoms include um, severe pain in the upper abdomen, Pain at the back between shoulder blades, nausea, jaundice, abdominal bloating, intolerance of fatty food, indigestion. There are many diagnosis methods like uh, abdominal ultrasound, endoscopic ultrasound which uses high frequency waves, ERCP, CT or CAT scans, blood tests, etc. Risk factors include obesity, excess estrogen from pregnancy may lead to gallstones. People over age 60 are more likely to develop gallstones than young people. Women are more likely to have gallstones than uh, men, etc. They can be prevented by not skipping meals, losing weight slowly, eating high fibrous foods and maintaining a healthy weight. Thank you. My name is Padishwa and from, I am from grade 10 so today I'm going to explain the working model of a crane. Crane was first invented in Mesopotamian civilization, which is modern-day Iraq, in around 3000 BC. It was further developed in Egyptian civilization around 2000 BC. He is the inventor of the modern-day crane, whose name is William Armstrong. He's from British. He invented the crane around 1838. So coming to the uh, crane, the one of the major system of a crane is the pulley system. Uh, if a crane has more than one pulley, it is known as complex pulley. So, for example, if a crane which has three pulleys is lifting a load of 100 kgs, the thread will experience only the load of 20 kgs also. So, if a crane is carrying a very heavy load, it will tend to fall off. For that, at least 50% of the weight should be kept in the counterweight basket so that the center of the gravity of the crane is maintained and the crane will not fall off. Coming to the uses of crane, uh, it depends upon the types of crane. Different types of crane have different uses. For example, railroad crane has, which is used to build railroads. Tower crane is used to build high-rise buildings. Aerial crane is used to build skyscrapers which are very tall buildings. And floating crane is used to build ship compartments or sea bridges. Thank you. Good morning. Imagine this. Your smartphone can work in double speed if nanotechnology is practical. And also the Hiroshima Nagasaki bombings which are fair. Uh, which are infamous for the mass destruction can also cause eight times more damage if nanotechnology persisted back then. Good morning everyone. This is Ridhe. This is Harsh Kumar. This is Manvant. Today we all are going to explain we, we all are going to explain you about nanotechnology. Now you may or may not know what nanotechnology is. So today I'm gonna to tell you what nanotechnology is. It is the study of substances at a very tiny scale. This tiny scale is also known as the nanoscale. The nanoscale is around a thousand times smaller than the microscale and one billion times smaller than the meter scale. This nanotechnology has many applications, for example in cancer treatment. Uh, when uh, this cancer treatment can be, cancer can be treated in many ways like chemotherapy, radiation therapy and uh, surgeries. But why only nanotechnology? When we use traditional methods, uh, there is a high chance that the patient might be affected with uh, like side effects like uh, 
gastrointestinal problems and baldness. But in nanotechnology, there are no side effects. When the uh, nanoparticles are injected into the body in the form of tiny uh, pills and medicines, uh, they enter into the cancerous cell. Once they enter into the cancerous cell, they uh, release toxic drugs and medicines which help in the eradication of cancer without any side effects. Now I'd like to call upon Harsh to continue. You all might be wondering why, how nanotechnology are penetrating inside the cancerous cell. Uh, for this, you should know how nanotechnology is used. Nanotechnology used on a nanoscale. From, uh, for example, if you will see any substance at a nanoscale, it will differ from the same uh, from the same substance at an at a, at a naked scale. For example, diamond. Diamond, as you seen, it is hard, lustrous, and it is very hard, low densely packed. But where else you will see at nanoscale, it is there are so many spaces that this nanoparticles can penetrate through it easily. It is it passes through it passes through the passage or the blood vessels inside your body and reaches the cancerous or targeted cells. It enters the cells uh, and release two types of enzyme. First is to kill the enzyme or convert the enzyme or convert the cell into healthy cells. Now call upon Rude. This might be too theoretical. Imagine nanotechnology as a software which you can use in, uh, as your needs. The same nanoparticle which, has, which is used as uh, fertilizer can also be used as food. As every other coin has two sides, nanotechnology also has a disadvantage, uh, many disadvantages. Uh, if it is not there in correct hands, it can lead to mass destruction and also it proves in uh, many, uh, it, cause, it, proves, uh, it, it proves to be fatal to everyone. Thank you very much. Good morning everyone, my name is Rakshanda. My name is Brenda. My name is Poojita. And we are from 8A. And today we brought up a project on smoke and gas detector. We all know that so many houses are and apartments burn down because of leakage of LPG gas, ACs and refrigerators. These leakages may, ha may cause health issues and may even cause death. So to prevent this, we brought up with a project smoke and gas detector system which detects the dangerous levels present in the air and uh, provide us with a light and a siren. Uh, the, this, this detector helps us to be alert before the house gets burnt. Uh, to, as you can see here, by developing an by developing an efficient and accurate smoke and gas detector system, we hope to contribute to advancement of home safety and air quality tech monitoring technologies, ultimately improving the ultimately improving the well-being of security and uh, individual communities. Thank you. And I will be explaining about DNA fingerprinting. In movies, they show the DNA test right, sir, the father and son the relation. This is the process for that test. So DNA is a short for deoxyribonucleic acid. It is a polymer compound of two nucleotide chains that coil against each other to form a double helix. It's also the shape of a twisted ladder. This process mainly contains four steps. That is the extraction of DNA, PCR or polymerase chain reaction, gel electrophoresis and southern blotting. The first step mainly involves breaking the cell membrane because the DNA is present in the nucleus. We have to remove the DNA, we have to isolate it from the rest of the cell. After we isolate the DNA, it's usually in a very small quantity, right, sir? It's not enough to study for scientists. So we have to multiply the DNA. To do that, we need to use PCR, polymerase chain reaction. It's a machine process which like, takes an artificial segment of DNA, like we can see here. It takes an artificial segment, attaches it to the real segment, and then it starts adding nucleotides like that. It starts adding it unless, until the complete DNA is complete. After that, we are resulting in two DNAs. So this is what happens in PCR. We can multiply this a number of times, we can get millions or billions of copies of DNA. After PCR, we use restriction enzymes. This is an enzyme used to cut the DNA into smaller particles. It helps us in the next process, which is gel electrophoresis. In this process, we use electricity to divide DNA by size. So in an agarose gel, which, help, which provides a free movement for DNA, this gel is like, it has combs. This comb is what makes the well to produce the DNA in. After the DNA is placed inside the comb, it gives us the, a block shape. So like when we pass electricity, DNA is negatively charged. So as we pass electricity, it moves to the positive terminal. So the f smaller segments of electricity move faster. 
the bigger segments move slower, so they cover a less distance. Because of that, the distance which each DNA travels is different. And that's what results in a unique DNA profile for each individual. This profile has to be stored in order to send the forensic science department or the policy investigation. So in order to store it, we have to use southern blotting. It's a storage method for DNA fingerprinting. In this method, we have to transfer the DNA from the gel to the nylon sheet. This nylon sheet is a nitrocellulose membrane which helps preventing the DNA from moving from the nylon sheet to the buffer. So the buffer is a liquid that helps us to keep the nylon sheet attached to the DNA. So we, we do this by the compression of weight which is placed over a marble tile or a glass tile. It helps us to push the weight evenly across the gel so that like the DNA with the compression, it can move from the gel to the nylon sheet. Do you have any questions? Huh? Thank you, sir. If you like the project, you can leave a feedback near the exit. Identify this white suspicious powder, as you can see. Yeah. We would identify and quantify this chemical substance to determine whether it's a drug or a toxin. Toxin means medicine. We can use various techniques such as chromatography and spectroscopy to identify these substances. As you can see, this water bottle has been imprinted by the fingerprints of the murderer. Please. Uh, okay. Does it all fingerprints? Yes. of that spray is when it is sprayed on fingerprints it will peel off like a paper you know sir when you apply for other cards they ask for your biometrics yeah that is because when we compare this with your other card database of biometrics if they both match your suspect has been found oh. so shall i not give my fingerprints to other card then? sir with an other card yeah, it's I not possible <laughs> Or he might see from the criminal background. Oh. So in the police database, police database. Might see. Okay. Now my friend Yuan will explain about forensic biology. Forensic biology is all about examining biological evidences. Initial assessment is very crucial in forensic biology. First, we have to visually examine any injuries, trauma or abnormalities. Document the body's posture or any other objects lying nearby. Measuring the body's temperature can estimate the time of death. The body's heart, the crime show occurred decently. Likewise, if the body is cold, the crime should have occurred a long time ago. In a crime scene model here, we have taken samples of blood stains and hair follicles. So, forensic biologists can link these to a specific person. We can collect DNA from various parts of our body, such as hair, blood, teeth, bones, saliva, cells, etc. So, what do you do after collecting? How do you compare to the DNA? Yeah, so we actually extract the DNA. Extracted the DNA. Does police have any database? DNA database? No sir, if you have the hair particle, mm -hmm. they can easily be extracted. The DNA can DNA. be easily extracted. How do you compare the DNA with others? I mean, to say sir, DNA can be done. DNA. You can learn from yeah, the DNA. You, get, you don't get the fingerprints, you only get the DNA. How do you identify the criminal then? Sir, DNA cannot be found like on the But you can have hair samples fallen on the Yes, hair yes, samples. Yes. No. For a so in this uh, crime scene, the assailant has attacked the victim with a gun uh, because of that the blood has splattered around. And the size of the blood uh, is small because the uh, gunshot has traveled in a high velocity. This type of splatter is known as gunshot splatter. Let us hear that is a larger blood stain and, uh, this and the velocity is low. So this type of splatter is known as um, beating uh, splatter. There are three other types of splatter, uh, satellite splatter, cast off pattern and aspirated blood stain pattern. And uh, with the help of uh, physics, we can reconstruct the whole crime scene. That's good actually. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions sir? Any questions sir? Yeah. Is this uh, technology as increased? Yes, of course. Very good technology. Yes. Sir, any questions? Any questions? Yeah. Sir, can, if you like this project, uh, please write... Uh, yeah, sure. 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 Good morning everyone, I Abhinav of Grade 9 with my companions Vedant and Sriyan are honored to present our project Army Security Gate. Ensuring the security of our military bases is a critical priority. With increasing threats and the need for efficient security measures, our project focuses on implementing the Arduino based automatic access control system to safeguard sensitive areas. I hand over to Vedant.
let's see how a project works for example if a car or a person wants to go to a indian army security gate or an indian base it should pass through the indian army security gate for that it should have an R and a smart id card this is embedded with rfid chips which uh, have personal data of the indian army security officials or or and can gain permission once this uh, once this card is verified the car open the gate opens and closes after 7 seconds this is called closing interaction we basically made this for the indian officials uh, that are basically standing near the indian army security gate for day and night in hot sunny days and cold winters so by implementing this project they can have the personal time they can have the personal time family time and can relax thank you Good morning everyone. My name is Nakshitra and my name is Tapasya. Today we are yeah, going yeah, to yeah. tell you about why do things float and sink. Now I am going to tell you why do things float and sink. Things float and sink because if they have less amount of weight they will float. If they have more amount of weight they will sink. Also we are going to show you things floating and sinking experiment. Let's see which things float and sink. Thank you and have a nice day. Good morning everyone. My name is Aitya from grade 4B. Today my topic is apple oxidation. Can help stopping the apple from turning brown. I am taking lemon juice, milk, vinegar and salt water. Take a piece of slice. Cut each piece in the same size. Different size in lemon juice, different size in milk, different size in vinegar, different size in salt water. Every 50 minutes observe what is happening. You can observe milk, vinegar and salt water is slowly turning brown. Why? Because oxygen is there in it. Why lemon juice is not turning brown? Because oxygen is less in lemon juice. Thank you. Good morning, Good morning everyone. everyone. Today we are going to represent about butterfly life cycle. Let's start with the eggs. Eggs are laid by the female butterfly on the mulberry plants. When this eggs hatch, it becomes into a larva. The job of larva is to eat and eat and eat. When it stops eating, it becomes into a pupa. Inside the pupa, the larva goes under the process of metamorphosis, then slowly emerges into a butterfly. Do you know what this process is called? Metamorphosis. The pupa which completely changing into an adult butterfly is called metamorphosis. metamorphosis. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Ayushi from grade 5C. Going to talk about windmill. What is a windmill? Windmill is an instrument to demonstrate the conversion of mechanical energy into electrical energy. What are we going to do in this project? In this project, a DC motor is used to generate the electricity. The copper coil inside the motor rotates and generates the electricity. Final output is direct current. This current is given to LEDs through wires. LEDs will glow and will get to know that electricity is generated. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Rajesh from from grade, grade 5. This is my friend Yugan. Today we are going to explain about windmill. How is energy formed? Energy is formed by some of the ways which are windmill. What is it? This is a windmill. Let me see. The energy generated from the motor which mm, turns on the lights and make, make it glow. Thank you. My name is Ashwant Kumar from grade 6A. Today's my topic is about automatic rain detector. The rain sensor is located behind the windscreen near the review mirror. It connects of LEDs that beam infrared light and a controlled photo dyer where it reflects back onto the photo dyer. This is the uh, rain sensor that connects of this uh, buzzer. It makes the sound when the raindrop fall on this rain sensor. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. I am Khoishanam from 4B. My project is lemon battery. I made this project by using copper, iron nail, lemon and a few wires. Not just the lemon battery, the fantastic science project but also the real world's application in areas limited access to electricity such as remote villages or disaster stricken region. Lemon battery is suitable and renewable source of power. Conclusion, acid in the lemons does produce electricity. Thank you. 
Good, good afternoon everyone. My name is Dikshita from grade 4. Today I am going to show how the animometer works. The cup animometer consists of four hemispherical cups mounted on the vertical shaft. When the hemispherical cups rotates with the wind, the vertical shaft also rotates. A calibrated dial at the base of the vertical shaft counts the number of rotation per minute. This is then converted to find the wind velocity. Now I am going to show how it works. It measures the wind speed. Thank you and have a great day. Three, two, one. Good morning everyone. My name is Shesta. My name is Hadia. My name is Shreyas. My name is Robert. So today we are showing a DIY magnetic doll. A fun project that mixes creativity and science. Now I am telling purpose. This project show this project helps us to learn about magnets and how they can be used in cool ways like changing outfits on a doll easily. Now I am telling conclusion. In conclusion, my DIY magnetic doll. It's not just a craft, it's fun away to learn about science. I hope it inspires you to make your own project. Over to you, Hadia. How? Now I am telling how it works. The doll has magnets in it fit to stick together and change outfit quickly oh, what you share but now I'm telling materials so I use simple materials like doll magnet strips doll magnet strips mag fabric and a glue gun these items are easy to find and let you be creative over to Rafa DLO application. Magnet technology is all around us, from fridge, magnet to robots. This project helps us understand how it works. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Good morning everyone. everyone. My name is Rati. My name is Vedanshi. Today we are going to play the issue of good or bad. First I am going to tell the good side. Chewing gum is good for our teeth. If we chew gum, our spit will come more. Do you know something interesting? Spit is a natural cleaner for our teeth. If we chew gum, it gives a little exercise for our jaw muscles. Now my friend Vedanshi is going to tell the bad side. Thank you, Jagruti. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to tell about bad side. If we eat more sweet chewing gum, our teeth will be cavities. If we chew more and more chewing gum, some air will go inside our stomach and our stomach will bloat it and feel uncomfortable. Now my friend Jagruti is going to tell about how to make chewing gum. Thank you, Vedanshi. Now I'm going to tell how to make chewing gum. Chewing gum is made with flavors, colors, gummies, sweetness, and etc. Thank you. Have a nice day. Good morning, sir. My name is Aro and I have my classmates Chetan and Ayatish. Today, my topic is about windmill. Let's dive in to know more about windmills. What is windmill? Windmill is a device used to generate electricity with the help of wind. So we can say that the energy produced by the movement of an object or due to the position of an object is called mechanical energy. Every child is aware of a toy called wind fan. The concept of windmill is also the same as that of a wind fan. When we move fast, the wind blades of the fan also rotate faster. The same thing happens with the windmill. The energy produced by the movement of the blades is used to produce electricity. So what happened here is that the blades of the turbine move with the help of wind. This movement produces mechanical energy. Now a turbine is attached to the generator is to convert electrical energy. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Sandhika and I'm Aisha. Today we are here to present our project and cooler module. Today I'm super excited to share you with this amazing invention which makes us feel cool and comfortable in these hot summer months. The air cooler materials used in this model are DC motor and fan. This model works on the process of evaporation. These fantastic machines use water to cool the air, making it fresher and easier to breathe. This AC model is simple and affordable to beat the heat during summer. And the best part, they are really good for the environment too. Unlikely some other cooling machines, air cooler does not use any harmful chemicals which can hurt our planet. It can be moved from one place to another place easily. It has more energy efficiency than air conditioners. Now we are going to show you how this model works. Thank you. Good morning. 
everyone. My name is Suhani. My name is Kathleen. My name is Kapka. We are here to represent about the topic about what does your brain do when you're sleeping. The brain processes the function of each and every body part and controls them too. You have heard the brain is considered as the main part of the body that is slightly to be sensitive. If a little touch to it, it could develop many diseases or uh, it could uh, develop the chances of dying too. Or to Catlin. Sleep enhances learning and problem solving skills by getting new information and experiences. The brain model shows how the brain controls our thoughts, movements and senses. Each part has a special job making the brain vital and amazing organ. Thank you. And have a nice day. Good morning everyone. I am Gaurash. I am Ananya. I am Sri Krishna. Today our project is about the magnetic swing. The basic idea of this working model is that the similar poles of a magnet repel each other. The swinger moves using the force of magnets. It works by the help of magnets and then there are the swings which makes it move by the magnetic field. Magnets can push or pull each other without, without touching is called magnetic force. Application of magnetic swing are wireless charging mobile devices, aircrafts, spacecrafts and science kits. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Abhishek with my partner Aradhya and Nainika. Today we will express our amazing topic. Farm to Table. Have you ever thought how our best friends which is your play? Let us find out. Farmers grow and harvest wheat. Wheat is clean and transport the milk. Cannots are put into machines and grind to flour. We convince they go into bread and mix the bread. Bread is packed properly to the same freshness. Packed bread reaches to the shop to be sold. And you should see the expiry date before buying the bread and etc. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Good morning everyone. I, Ranj Krishna of Great 4B, is here to talk a few lines about my project. Why do peeled oranges sink? The orange peel actually serves like a life jacket. The pores of the orange traps a lot of air, making it less dense. So, it floats. But when we remove the peel of the orange, all that extra mass is lost, making it more dense. So it sinks to the bottom. I have this unpeeled orange. I place it in a bowl of water. You may notice it floats for just a few seconds. Now, I have this peeled orange. I place it in a bowl of water. You may notice it does not float at all. That happens because when something is in water or any fluid, it, it has been pushed around by a force named beyond force. The stronger the force, the more that the object floats. It is also called as uh, Archimedes principle. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I have Sini and I have of grade 4. Today we are here to tell about Sea coastal erosion. The wearing away of land and removal of weak segments by high winds, drainages, wave actions, wave currents, and tidal currents are called sea coastal erosion. Coastal erosion is a global issue affecting on coastal erosion. Coastal erosion may be caused by the hydraulic action, abrasion, impact corresponding by wind and water or other forces. The soft areas filled up with sediment eroded from harder areas and rock formation are eroded away. Human activities can be one of the reasons for coastal erosion. Now, we are going to tell the materials which we used for the erosion. We used clear baking dish, blue food color, play sand, scrap cardboard, water bottle and rocks and, and some shells. Now, we are going to make waves with the gentle bottle. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Mukshashri. My name is Akash. And my name is Ahana. Today we are going to present a model on rethink before you drink. Health effects. Uh, consuming juices every day may not be good for your health. Some are healthy while some are 
harmful for your body. Sugar content. Caffeinated drinks give you energy, but drinking too much caffeinated drinks may not, may affect your sleep. Hydration. Water is the best drink. Water keeps you hydrated and helps your body work properly. Helps your body work properly. Making choices. <coughs> Check labels and think what you are putting into your body. Finally, I would like to say, think before you drink, your health is in your hands. Tooth decay. High sugar content in many of cool drinks can lead to tooth decay and cavities. Addiction. Cool drinks can be addicted, leading to overconsumption and dependence. Calorie intake. Many cool drinks are high in calories, contributing to weight gain and obesity. Digestive issues. Carbonated drinks can lead to bloating, gas and some of discomfort. Thank you. Uh, good morning everyone. I have the ready of grade 4. Presenting a module based on causes of air pollution. Now I'm going to tell you a few lines about causes of air pollution. Pollution is the introduction of harmful materials into the environment. These harmful materials are called pollutants. Pollutants can be natural such as volcano ash. They can also be created by human activities such as trash or runoff produced by factories. Pollutants can damage the quality of air, water and land. Now I'm going to tell you the causes. The burning of fossil fuels, industrial emission, indoor air pollution, indoor air pollution, wildfires, and open burning of garbage waste. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am Vihan from 4B. Good morning, everyone. I am Vidhan from 4B. We are here to present about water purification. This is the fourth stage of water purification. First, blast stones. Second, small stones. Third, sand. Fourth, cotton and we have here purified water. If we pour in the top of, wa of water purification, the blast, blood, the blast stones will purify the water and it will come to the second stage of water purification, small stones. The small stones will purify and it will come to the third stage of water purification, sand. Third stage of water purification sand, uh, the it will purify and come to the fourth stage. Fourth stage, cotton will absorb germs and it gives us clean water. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Chaitra and my name is Prachi. We are going to present hydroelectric power plant. Working principle of hydro turbines. The water comes from the head to intake and store in dam. Dam is also known as water plant. A narrow opening to a tunnel is called penstock. A turbine spins because of the force of water kept on turbine. Parts of hydroelectric power plant. Dam, which stores water and also known as water plant. Penstock. A narrow opening to a tunnel is called penstock. Power station. Power station is beside the turbine in the powerhouse. Hydropower plants, there are three, three types, types of hydropower hydro facilities. facilities. Empowerment, diversion, pump storage, empowerment. The, it is the most common type of hydro, hydroelectric plant. It uses a dam to store river water in a reservoir. Reservoir is nothing but a large natural or artificial lake used as source of water supply. Model. Good morning dear friends, so here I am going to explain which soap and which water is good for our health with the help of pH paper. This pH paper tells whether the material or with whether the material or solution is acidic, alkaline or neutral. The pH scale ranges from 1 to 14, 1 to 6 is acidic, 7 is neutral, 8 to 14 is alkaline. So here I am testing four different kinds of soaps. First, I pour water on each soap and then place the pH paper. The soap at deep place turn 
the ph paper turn black if you use that soap you'll get skin irritation or skin rashes i'm moving on to my next experiment i'm testing three different kinds of water with the help of ph meter river water are not good for our health tap water are also not good for our health drinking water are good for our health thank you good morning sir this is kartik shridhi from grade 4b starting for the few to speak a few lines about the token model firstly let me tell you how i made it i made it with fake mole clay pink color sheet and cardboard now i'm going to tell you the types of t3 help we have incisors canines premolars and molars incisors these teeth are are located in the front center in our mouth we have total eight of this kind four on the upper and lower jaws these teeth are used to bite the food now canines these are the sharpest teeth in our mouth we have total four of this kind two on the upper and lower jaws these teeth are used to tear the food into small pieces now premolars premolars are the second largest teeth in our mouth we have total eight of this kind four on the upper and lower jaws these teeth are used to tear and crush the food they can do these actions because they have a flat biting surface the molars molars are the largest teeth in our mouth we have total 12 of this kind six on the upper and lower jaws these teeth are used to bite tear crush and grind the food they can do these actions because they have a flat biting surface same as the premolars but a little bit larger now let me tell you why teeth is very useful for us This is very useful for us because it helps us to bite, chew and eat the food. It also helps us to form sounds and speak clearly. It all teeth is very important for everyone's smile as it helps us to as a healthy smile can be a great asset to all of us. Hence I conclude that if we take care of your teeth, then healthy teeth will take care of your smile. Keep smiling. Thank you. Good morning dear parents I am Yukta from grade 5A and today I am here to tell you about the tongue let us let me start the tongue has about 10000 taste buds these taste buds are linked to the brain by nerve fibers now let me tell you some points about taste buds taste buds are tiny sensory organs which help you to experience taste there are four types of taste buds sweet salty sour and bitter first let me start with sweet Sweet food contains some form of sugar like honey, fruits and ice cream. It is present at the front surface of the tongue. Now, let me move on to salty. Salty food contains table salt and mineral salt. It locates around the front edge of our tongue. Now, let me move on to soil like citrus fruits and vinegar. It locates on the either side towards the back of our tongue. Last but not least, let's move on to bitter. Bitter is a complex taste. Wherever your taste buds recognize that it's good or bad, like coffee, dark chocolate and chili. It locates on the back of our tongue. And there's one more taste bud which you didn't know, which is umami. Umami, which is also known as monosodium glutamate, it is located at the center of our tongue and it's present in food like mushrooms, tomatoes, and etc. And there's one fact about taste buds, which is taste buds can usually recover in 10 or 12 days. So if there's an injured taste bud in your body, it can be easily recovered. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Shweta with my companion Hanvi. Today we are here to talk on topic rainwater harvesting and hydroelectricity. Rainwater harvesting is a simple process or technology used to conserve rainwater by collecting and storing it that runs from rooftops, parks, grounds, etc. Here we are conserving the rainwater and using the same for generating electricity that is none other than hydroelectricity. Here the rainwater gets collected in the tub and passes through the pipe and then it falls on the turbine. Then the turbine spins. When the turbine spins, it generates electricity that is none other than hydroelectricity. Then it gets stored in the batteries. Hydroelectricity is the source of energy that is clean, renewable and immensely powerful. The conversion of mechanical energy from flowing water into electrical energy is called hydropower or hydroelectricity. This method is mainly used in dams and reservoirs. So, do you know how does hydroelectricity work in dams? Yeah, 
when water from the dam falls on the turbine, the turbine spins. This turbine is connected to the generator to produce electricity. Hanvik, can you tell me about the benefits of hydroelectricity? Yeah, of course. Hydropower provides benefits beyond electricity generation and many others. It provides low cost electricity and durability over time compared to other sources of energy. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Vishnu with my companion Abhinav, Nishan and Hashan Sai. Today we are going to learn an amazing organ in our body called kidney. The main job of the kidney is to remove the waste and return the blood to the body. The speed of the blood is 120 ml a minute for men, 100 ml a minute for women and 70 ml a minute for kids. In a day the kidney filters 200 liters of blood and 170 liters of urine is formed. Did you know that our kidneys are bean shaped organs on either side of our spine just below the ribcage? The function of kidney is to purify the blood. They regulate our body's water balance, blood pressure and electrolyte levels. In kidney, we have tiny filtering units called nephrons which, which help in purifying the blood. Our kidneys work tirelessly every day to keep our bodies healthy and functioning properly. Here is how the kidney works. The blood of the kidney to run all arteries with various fruits and substances. The kidney is the blood passes through millions of tiny filtering units called nephrons. The kidney cleans the blood through useless substances and waste substances. And the clean blood goes back to the body and the various fruits and substances come out of the body through urine. These cells keep our body healthy and balanced. These are the particles. The kidney filters the blood and make it and the waste products go to the bladder and it come out of the body. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Ashwik. I am Suhas. I am Hasit. I am Shalom. We are from grade 5. Today our topic is about magnet. Shalom, can you tell us about the magnet? Magnets will stick to material that are attracted to magnetic fields such as iron, nickel and cobalt. Over to you Hasit. Brass, plastic, wood, aluminium and copper will not attract to magnets. This is harsh magnet and this is bad magnet. North and south cannot attach but north and north cannot attach and south and south cannot attach. The pendulum will float because of the magnet attraction. These materials are known as ferromagnetic materials, magnetic materials. Some examples of these are nickel, cobalt, steel, iron. Some stainless steel, those that contain in iron. Thank, Thank you. you. Good morning everyone, I am Gunjan from grade 5b. Today I am going to tell about hydropower system. The most common type of hydropower system is an empowerment facility. The, em the empowerment facility is typically large in size, uses a dam to produce river water in the reservoir. The, the diversation. Diversation is a portion of the river that utilizes the riverbed elevation. Pump storage. A pump storage works like a giant battery. There are four types of hydropower system. Large hydropower system, small hydropower system, micro hydropower system and sizes of hydropower system. Thank you. Good morning everyone, my name is Suryansh. My name is Akshay. Welcome to our Science Way project called Water Dispenser. In this article, we will delve into the process of making water dispenser by using simple materials such as cardboard pieces, water bottles, pipes and glasses, along with its educational benefits and practical applications. Principle of pressure and gravity. The function of water dispenser is just fundamental principle of pressure and gravity. When we open the bottle of the cup, the air goes in and the filter water comes out. It can also be used. When we open a water bottle, can fish just go into the water bottle and give us clean and purify water. Safety tips. Safety tips. Wear safety glasses to protect eyes from potential germs. Handle hot melting glue for avoiding burns and injuries. Use soft knife carefully. Use soft knife carefully to to prevent accidents and cuts. Always work under supervision of parents, teachers or responsible elders. Thank, Thank you. Good morning everyone. We are here. We great fashion students are here to explain how an electromagnet works. First of all, we are going to show how an electromagnet works. With the help of the battery's electricity, an electromagnet works. Over to you Pratham. An electromagnet uses electric current to create a magnetic field. When the current flows through a coiled wire, it generates a magnetic field that can be turned on and off. This ability to control the 
magnetic field makes it essential in many devices such as electric motors and relays. Over to you, Haida. Thank you, Pratap. In a mara machine's electromagnets play strong magnetic field to produce detailed images of the human body. This non invasive technique helps doctors to diagnose and treat medical conditions, accurately the ability to control the magnetic field, ensures precise imaging, making a more vital tool in modern medicine. Thank you. Over to you, Shriya. Thank you, Haida. Maglev trains which use magnetic gravitation relies on powerful electromagnets to lift and properly train above the tracks. This reduces friction for allowing high speed travel and smooth rides. Electromagnets enable trains to achieve remarkable speed, revolutionizing transportation and, and providing a glimpse into a future of travel. Over to you, Ritwik. Thank you, Sriyana. An electromagnet works by winding a wire into a coil and an iron core, amplifying the magnetic field. This principle is utilized in various applications from household appliances to industrial machinery. Electromagnets for satellite and controllability make them indispensable in technology, enhancing efficiency and functionality in numerous fields. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> The Shlok's father? Yes, it's Shlok's father. I remember. So, would you like to give a feedback? No. no. A video? You'll have to come above. Hello, sir. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good, thank you. How is it, sir? You liked it? Of course. It's very long. Very, thank you, ma'am. Wonderful, and uh, it's uh, all hard work I can see. Yeah, Lord, ma'am. And all and the kids are. Good morning everybody, I am Tia Nikunj Desai from grade 5B. I am explaining my project about sustainable agricultural practices. So welcome to sustainable agricultural practices at the Leeville Public School Company. I have divided my project into three parts. So, number one, soil nutrient management. Number two, water management or drip irrigation. Number three, 
in irrigating livestock and crops. So let's start with the meaning of sustainable agricultural practices. What does sustainable agricultural practices mean? Agricultural practices meaning the we need some resources in growing crops, which is also known as agricultural practices. Um, growing crops meaning uh, we need soil, water, sunlight. Sustainable meaning we save them. Sustainable meaning we save them. So agricultural practices, when we are doing them, we save the resources. So over here, drip irrigation. So I on the switch, the water, there is a well. There is a pump inside the well. So there is a pipe connected to the well as well as the tank. The second pipe connected to the tank is also again connected to the well. There are drippers made holes in the pipe. So they give water to the plants. Soil nutrient management. There are ladybugs in the field which eat all the harmful insects which are very harmful for the soil such as insects. They harm the soil very badly or pollute the soil very badly. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Tejasvi Ada from grade 5b and today I am here to explain you all about my science fair project which is a laser security alarm system along with a farmer's life in rural areas. So this model talks about all that. So the house, the well and whatever you are able to see in my project are a part of farmer's life in rural areas. In this field you can see that some animals have came and destroyed all the crops of the farmer. That's the reason the farmer and the bulls have to plow the field again. So keeping this in mind, in the other field a proper laser security system is introduced. So, in this field, when the laser beam continuously falls on the LDR, the voltage drop across it is very low as the resistance of the LDR becomes less. And as soon as the laser beam is interrupted by any means of object or a barrier, the voltage drop across it becomes high due to change in the LDR resistance. This triggers the alarm or buzzer in the circuit. Now I would like to show how my model works. When any intruder passes through the entire laser beam area, the alarm turns on to alert the entrance of an unauthorized person. Thank you and have a nice day. Good morning. My name is Devanshi and I am studying in class IC. Today, I am going to present a working model of water dispenser. A water dispenser is a machine that has ability to dispense water and provides easy access to drinking water. It is a very useful equipment and can supply cold, normal and hot water. So, there are two types of water dispenser. A, um, a bottom load water dispenser and the top load water dispenser. So, uh, I would like to present a bottom load water dispenser model. It is composed of cardboard and has a wooden waste for support. The external feature include a lever, a water exit or the outlet and an inlet for adding the water. So, when the lever is pressed, the water begins to flow and the light which is a UV light illuminates. Thank you. Good morning everybody, this is our project Smart Agriculture Innovation made by the team myself Sri Rudra. Okay. We have mainly four modules here, seed production area, temperature control, rainwater harvesting and farm security area with a real solar seed light and animal grazing area. Here we have the seed production area. When a drop of rain falls on this rain sensor, it automatically closes and prevents from the seeds to get destroyed. Here we have the animal grazing area where the animal graze with their shepherd. Now I hand it over to Dhruvan to say us about the temperature control. Here we have the greenhouse. Inside the greenhouse there is a temperature fan. When the temperature in the greenhouse rises above 32 degrees Celsius, the temperature fan will automatically switch on. Here we can see the soil moisture detector. It helps us to detect the moisture or the wetness of the soil and adjust accordingly. Now I hand it over to Akhil to say about the rainwater harvesting. Here we have the small house. When the rainfall falls on the rooftop of the house, the water is being sent to the tank. Here we can use this water for household chores and farming. This is how it works. The materials used are motor pump and transparent pipes. This is the real solar seed light. This is how it works. Now I hand over it to Nikit to say about the farm security area. Here we fixed a fence with a wire. 
when an animal or a person tries to enter the farm, the alarm beeps and farmer can protect his crops. Here we also fix the scarecrow down with a motor, which will give a feel to the animals that there is someone in the farm. Thank you. Good morning everyone, I Kavya along with my friend Bhavika. Today we are here to talk about a fascinating aspect of chemistry that impacts our daily life. pH and a simple yet effective method to test pH using purple cabbage extract. Let me explain you about pH first. pH or potential of hydrogen is a measure how acidic or basic a solution is. The scale ranges from 0 to 14 where 7 being neutral. Lower values indicate acidity and higher values indicate alkalinity. Now why purple cabbage extract? Purple cabbage extract contains anthocyanin pigments that can change the color depending on the pH of the solutions they are in. In acidic conditions, they turn reddish while in basic conditions, they turn bluish green. To extract this indicator, simply boil the chopped purple cabbage in water for about 10 minutes. Then strain out the liquid. This colorful extract can be used to test pH of various substances around us. Take a small amount of the extract and mix it with the substance you want to test. Observe the color change and match it to the pH scale to de determine whether the substance is acidic, neutral or basic. So, potassium hydroxide is a basic solution. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Myself, Harsha Patil. And this is Sidra. We are Stand from grade 10. 10. Standing in front of you all to explain about adulteration in foodstuff. Adulteration is the mixing of inorganic substances into organic substances. Example, artificial colors, synthetic colors, chemical and fertilizers. So, the first test we are doing here is the starch and milk. Add a tincture of iodine in the milk. In the milk, you have to add a tincture of iodine and you have to mix it. If the color is not changing, it means the milk is not adulterated, it's the pure. If the milk is changing its color into blue or the purple, it indicates the presence of starch. Second test is of the tea powder. Take water and add a, te add a teaspoon of water and mix it. You would see that all the particles are settling down, leaving a transparent color. This is the adulterated tea powder. You could see that after mixing, the tea powder is leaving its color into brown. Over here, you can differentiate the tea powder of this is transparent and this is leaving into the brown color. Here also I am showing, showing some test. We will first we will show the honey test where this is the beehive honey, this is the pure honey. Just add a little bit of water in it. and mix it very well if the honey is pure it will form a honeycomb layer and it will does not disperse in the water where in adulterated honey
when the adulterated honey it will disperse in the water completely and form a yellowish color let's take one more example of the turmeric this is the adulterated turmeric add some turmeric in the in the water and mix it very well the turmeric is changing into a yellow color and does disperse in the water completely whereas in uh, in organic turmeric it completely dissolves in the water and does not form any color and if you test this at home and if you know this this have been containing adulterated you can complain the act 37 it was launched in 1954 this the person who has done the adulteration will be in the prison and form and paid 500 more than 500 Hence, before buying, do the simple test for your good. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello, everyone. Myself, Arus. Today, I'll be demonstrating an experiment called chemical bar. So, this is phenolphthalein, and this is ammonia. Now, I'll pour ammonia into phenolphthalein. As you can see, it turns to be pink color. Now, I'll pour ammonia into lead nitrate. as you can see it's like white white color now i'll pour this into copper sulfate now you can see it's like pale blue color now i'll pour this three solution into another container containing nitric acid as you can see as soon as i pour phenolphthalein into nitric acid the uh, the, co uh, the color is completely disappeared as you can see as soon as i pour color solution into nitric acid they lost their color thank you good morning everyone myself Good morning, everyone. Myself, Sajran. I'll be demonstrating uh, uh, the chemical uh, chameleon experiment. So, first, we'll take sucrose. And we'll take potassium hydroxide. And we'll take potassium permanganate to see the color change. as you can see the colors change into green and uh, and gradually the color fades away and its real life application is to to see to check the sugar levels of the blood thank you hello everyone this is basar of class 10 today i am going to show iodine clock reaction in this reaction we are going to need two acids hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid first we are going to add hydrogen hydrogen peroxide and second we are going to add sulfuric acid to this and the second solution second beaker we are going to take uh, sodium thiosulfate sodium sodium thiosulfate which should be more in the quantity and we are going to add few drop few drops of iodine few drops of iodine and starch and few drop of starch now as you see when i mix this two container this two there will be no color appearing into it this is because of the thiosulfate present present in the solutions the thiosulfate stops the iodine and starch complex to react so there is no color now after some time the color appears it take it approximately takes 40 to 50 seconds for the color to appear thank you Good morning everyone I am Virat from grade 9 today I am going to show you the beauty of chemistry in the way of an activity in this activity I take two chemical compounds called lead nitrate and potassium iodide 
when I uh, mix these two chemical compounds, they create a brilliant yellow precipitate called lead iodide. As you can see, it has turned into yellowish color. And this is the precipitate also. As you need to heat it for 15 to 20 minutes, so it uh, the precipitate can dissolve and as it uh, cools, it will start crystallizing itself into golden sprangles. This is all about my activity. Thank you guys. Water is dying force of all nature. Have you ever imagined the day without water? No, we have not and it is hard to imagine. We all need water to carry out different cellular activities. Good morning everyone, my name is Pritam from Grade 6 e and thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about my project Rainwater Harvesting. Many countries, especially those with arid environments, use rainwater harvesting as a cheap and reliable source of clean water. Ridges of soil are also constructed to prevent rainwater from flowing down the hills and slopes, so that even on days when little to no rainfall occurs enough is available to irrigate the crops. Rainwater harvesting is a technique to store rainwater and reuse it for further use. Many houses have built special places for collecting the rainwater which is usually collected where the rainwater falls. Now, let me explain you about the parts of the rainwater harvesting. This is the collecting tank or the catchment which is used to store the rainwater. And this is the conveyance system which is used to transport the water from the collecting tank to the recharger. And here comes the filtration method which is used to filter the water and remove all the pollutants from water. We can use coal, rock, hay and sand. And here comes the tanks and recharge structure which is used to store the rainwater which is ready to use. Now let me show you how it works. So here we can see it's raining and it gets collected in the collecting tank. It goes to the filtration tank, gets filtrated and directly to the storage tank. Now why do you use rainwater harvesting? Why is it so important? Today's scarcity of good quality as water has become a significant cause of concern. However, rainwater which is of pure quality can be used for for garden watering, toilet flushing, car washing and also cloth washing. The overflow water is sent to the well and, it, and from the well the water will directly go to the groundwater which makes the, which makes the soil moisture. And while coming, if we dive into it deeper, let us know the advantages of rainwater harvesting. Comes of water decreases our bills, lowers demand of freshwater resources, slow erosion is in dry environments, reduces flooding in low-lying areas. And the main important part is that it reduces soil erosion, storm water runoff, flooding and pollution of surface water with fertilizers, pesticides, metals and other sediments. It is an excellent source for water landscape irrigation with no chemicals, dissolved soils and fresh from all. But there is one disadvantage. If we don't co cover the collecting tank and the storage tank properly, it may attract insects and other waterborne diseases. And did you know that Krypton in South Africa and Bangalore in Karnataka has many lakes which are dried up? So government is trying to add this project called Rainwater Harvesting. Thank you. Good morning. I am so I'm studying grade 6 A. Today I'm going to talk about a wonderful topic that is generating electricity using rainwater at home. Rainwater harvesting is a type of a water harvest in which the raindrops are collected and stored for future use rather than allow it to run off. The rainwater can be collected from the rivers or house roofs and can be redirected to the deep pits, wells, burrows or storage tanks. The rainwater harvesting is one of the simplest and the oldest method for self supply of water for household. Let us see how the hydroelectric power is generated. The hydropower or hydroelectricity is a conversion of mechanical energy into flowing water. The, the fall and the movement of the water is a part of a continuous natural cycle of water called the water cycle. 
will not run out of any hydropower as long as the water cycle continues. Let us see it, how the hydroelectric power is generated in practical. The rainwater is stored on the rooftop of the house storage tanks and the water flows downwards to the rainwater harvesting tanks and used for different purposes like domestic usage and general electricity. By using a filter, the rainwater gets filtered and used for many domestic purposes like for animals, farming and household chores. By using a spiller, the water spills out of the turbine to generate electricity. The water gains a potential energy just before it spills from the top of the turbine or flows downhill. This potential energy is then converted into the kinetic energy as the water flows downwards. This water is then used to turn the blades of the turbine to generate electricity, which is then used to glow, LED lights, power appliances, and etc. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am Apriti from grade 6A and today I am very excited to show you my science fair project on how to convert wind energy into mechanical energy. First, let's understand what's wind energy. Wind energy is gained from the wind. Wind energy is a renewable source which means it won't run out like fossil fuels. Now I'll explain about my model. My model has two fans facing each other. One fan is connected to the battery and the other fan has been connected to the DC motor and LED light. Once you turn on the switch, the fan starts rotating and generates electricity. In conclusion, this small setup shows the potential of wind energy providing electricity without harming the environment. Thank you. Good afternoon everyone. I'm Nishika from Grade 5C. Today, I'm going to present my project on simple machines and tell how they make our daily tasks easier. Simple machines are basic mechanical devices which help us perform work with less effort. They include lever, wheel and axle, pulley, inclined plane, wedge and screw. A lever is a rigid bar that pivots around a fulcrum to move and lift floats. A wheel and axle consists of a larger wheel attached to a smaller axle, example like in cars. A pulley uses a wheel with a groove and a rope to change the direction of a force. Example like in flag poles and cranes. An inclined plane helps move objects up or down without lifting them. Example like in slides. A wedge is used to split, cut and move objects such as an X or a knife. A screw helps hold things together and lift materials. In conclusion, simple machines are fundamental components of many complex machines. Understanding them will help us appreciate how we can leverage science to make our daily tasks easier. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Loksha. And I am Kritika on the occasion of Saifari. We, we are here to explain you about windmill. Let us start. Windmill is responsible for producing electricity through winds. There is a project of ours which showcases how a windmill works. Let us get back. Windmill comes under the category of green energy which is generated through natural resources. Wind turbine, wind pump, wind engine etc. are the different names of the windmill. Windmill is a tall structure with rotating blades. When the wind blows over the blades of the windmill, the fans of the windmill start rotating. A electric generator is connected to the rotating blades through a shaft. The generator starts producing electricity once the blades start rotating. This electric power generator can be used for various purposes. They can be used for purposes such as generating electricity, milling grain, pumping water, Powering cargo ships, reducing carbon footprints and also for sailing, wind surfing and land surfing. This is how windmill works. So I hope you guys learned something from us. Thank, Thank you. you. Hello everyone, today we are going to explain how a vending machine works. It's an automatic machine which provides items like chocolates and snacks. We can take that if we want by Pressing the button or entering the code. For payment, we can use many items. Cash, coins, debit card, credit card and also pay mobile payment. After the payment, the machine checks the amount. If it is correct, the, I the item which is selected is, re is released at the collection area. Thank you. 
Good morning everyone. I am Sharia from 5th grade. So today I am going to explain about my working model Chandrayaan-3. So Chandrayaan-3 is India's ambitions and the most successful lunar mission. Following the predecessors of Chandrayaan-3, Chandrayaan-1 and Chandrayaan-2 and Chandrayaan-3 is India's most successful successful attempt to achieve and soft landing on the south pole of the moon surface. India is the only country to land on this part of the moon surface. Chandrayaan-3 aims to land on the on the moon's south pole uh, south pole uh, an area that hasn't been explored explored uh, much and uh, um, might contain might contain uh, water ice water ice uh, so chandrayaan 3 took 40 days to land on the moon chandrayaan 3 is launched by isro indian space research organization the chairman of ISRO is S. Somnath. My project works. When I press the syringe of, of the injection, the water travels through the pipe and the rocket goes up. And there is another syringe back here. And my project works with hydraulic press. So what is hydraulic press? The pressure of air or water is called hydraulic press. Things that use the hydraulic press are cranes, Cranes and aeroplanes. They use for operating the control panels. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Adira from Grade 5C. Today I am going to talk about rainwater harvesting. So what exactly is rainwater harvesting? Rainwater harvesting is the practice of collecting rainwater that falls on rooftops, land and other surfaces before it runs off or seeps into the ground. We can use this harvested rainwater for the following things. Domestic use, industrial use, agricultural use, retaining groundwater and it is beneficial for the environment as it helps in as it helps in uh, as it helps in uh, as it helps in prevention of soil erosion and flooding of roads now i'll explain you how it works uh, when it pours rain, the rooftop collects all of the water and sends it to the filter. The filter the filter filters the water and sends it to the sump. The sump stores the water and we can use this clean and harvested water for watering the plants, filling up the swimming pool, washing the car. Thank you. Good morning everyone. I am Arman from 6B and today I am going to show you how a Mongolian rocket works. It was made by ISRO in 2013 and it was launched also in 2013. It was uh, launched to explore the surface, atmosphere, mineralogy and morphology of Mars. It uses the idea of hydraulic press to lift up the rocket. Arunan was responsible for leading a team and build a spacecraft. The challenge for him to make a new communication system which would largely be autonomous so it could take decision and wake, wake up the Mars or, or, orbital engine after 300 days. K. Radhakrishnan was lead as a chairman of ISRO. V. K. Raju was the Mars orbital mission director. The Mars Orbital Mission carries three payloads, take on layers and recursives, methane sensor on Mars, MSM, MSM is designed to measure methane search for in the main atmosphere with the accuracy in the map source. Mars color camera, MCC, the stray color Mars color camera gives images and information about the surface features in the composite of the mental surface. They are useful to water the dynamic events of the Mars. What do you want? Thank you everyone for joining us. Bye. Good afternoon everyone, I am Ritwik of grade 6C and this is my science fair project called Hydraulic Bridge. Do you know what is the difference between normal bridge and a hydraulic bridge? I will tell you. First let's learn what is a hydraulic bridge. The hydraulic bridge also known as moving bridge. It spawns water to connect two land masses on opposite sides. In a nutshell it can be relocated to be a way for ships and boats. What is the use of hydraulic bridge? The, hydraulic, the use of hydraulic bridge is not only cars can go, down of it uh, boats and ships can go. Now I will show how it works. So when the force of water goes through the injection, it opens and slowly comes down again. This is how a hydraulic bridge works. Thank you. Good morning everyone. 
Firstly, thank you ma'am for giving me this opportunity today. So today I'm going to share different aspects of a fluid calling non-Newtonian fluid. So are you ready for a question that will bend your brain a little? And it is, what if there's a matter that fits into more than just one of these categories, solid and liquid? Prior non-Newtonian fluid, let's, fluid, let's understand what is fluid. Fluid. A fluid is a substance which is continuously deformed or flow due to shear forcing. There are two types of fluids, Newtonian fluid and non-Newtonian fluid. Non-Newtonian fluids are fluids which are constant, which are, that do not obey Newton's law of flow. They do not have a constant viscosity. To understand this word more clear, let's say hello to Ublak. Ublak, believe it or not, I didn't make this word up. It comes from a book written by Dr. Seuss. You know, the guy who wrote The Cat in the Hat. Another book he wrote called Bartholomew and the Ublak. There's a king who gets bored with normal everyday weather. So he, ma so he makes sticky stuff fall from the sky. That's where Ublak, the stuff you are going to... That's where Ublak got its name. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Kirtan from Grade 6C. Today I present the topic on solar energy. In the cities and the villages, global warming is continuously increasing issues over the world. It is one of the biggest problems which the world is currently facing through. To reduce global warming, we have found many innovative ideas by using solar energy. The energy which comes from the sun is called as the solar energy. As you can see, I have made a working model of the solar energy. When the sun rays fall on the solar energy, it, it generates electricity and glows the bulb inside. We can use solar energy in schools, houses, buildings, agriculture, street lights, huts, tents, and etc. We can also use solar energy for schooling, heating, and cooking purposes. Solar power has been one of the biggest blessings for the cities and the villages. So friends, go solar for a brighter future. Clean energy for a clean world. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Avyukta. And I am Aryan. And we are, we are, and we are talking about a what? water level indicator. A water level indicator is basically when the, we pour a water in a tank, it glows a water and the sensors send a signal to the bulbs. And the bulbs say how much water is within the water, uh, is within the tank. So wh whenever the water is over 100% or 100%, this, this buzzer will be sounded to indicate that how, uh, how uh, to indicate the water might overflow. The, uh, the water level indicator is a system that relies information on the control panel which, in, which indicates whether a water body has high or low water level. The water, le the water level indicator is used, in, is, is used in factories, chemical plants, electrical substation and in other liquid storage system. The per the, a water level indicator is important because it helps to detect possible changes in water flow, increase de or decrease uh, levels of water volume, which may indicate to flow path, flow path changes or potential floods. I hope you like our speech. Thank, Thank you. Good morning to everyone. Myself, Tarini from 6A, with my companions. Manvich. And Tulsi. So today we are going to explain about hydroponic farming. As you can see, there are two trays. The below tray consists of water, DC motor, transparent pipe, and the above tray consists of plants. Hydroponics is a technique of growing plants, usually crops, without soil. In this process, plants are grown on the nutritional dense water. Researchers suggest that the plants grown hydroponically grow faster and healthier than the plants grown in the soil. Hydroponically grown plants or agriculturally grown plants on the tray box with their roots are in the with their roots freely lagging below freely lagging below in the nutrient solution they needed. They are provided with required nutrients making roots of the plant get easier access to the nutrients. The advantage of this type of horticulture is to grow plants without any chemical fertilizers. Hydrophonic growing can be done indoor and outdoor. The six things needed for hydroponic farming are light, air, water, nutrients, heat and space. 
it requires proper temperature humidity optimal ph plants to water should be in correct ratio Fine, mist water is spreading onto the entire plants and roots are in the continuous corruption of nutrient solution they needed in proper temperature and lights. Plants that are grown vertically and in soil such as vines, potatoes, carrots are not suitable for the hydroponic system. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning everyone, my name is Birudranath from 6A. Today I am going to talk about the importance of current in the area of without global warming and go green soil chips. As a part of this, let's tap into the natural energy, especially the rain rainwater energy. Do you know that there are five types of rainwater energies? They are solar energy from the sun, ghetomal energy from the heat of the earth, biomass energy from the plants and animals, hydrophobic energy from the waves of the water and wind from the windmill. Today I am going to talk about wind energy. Wind, wind energy is also called as windmill. Windmill is a machine that converts the wind into kinetic energy and then into mechanical energy. Windmill always rotate in a clockwise direction. The first windmill was designed in the year 1854 by Daniel Herrade from the United States. Windmill is a structure that is interconnected with a motor present inside it. When the motor gears is on, the blades which are assisting in converting the mechanical energy into me mechanical energy. When the wind blows through the windmill, it converts the it goes into the generator and converts the wind into mechanical energy. Mechanical energy. Mechanical energy. See, when the blade spin, it goes into the generator, it generates the power and it generates the power and it goes to the transformer and transform the electricity and supplies to the homes. Thank you. Good morning everyone, myself Devan from Grade 6B of Delhi World Public School. So today I am going to talk about motorboats. Let us start with benefits of motorboats. Motorboats are used recreationally for travelling on water and for enjoyment of such sport as swimming, fishing and etc. In sport they are used for racing, piloting and navigation contests. Disadvantages of a motorboat. No fuel means the boat will go nowhere and the motorboat can go only as far as the fuel tank allows. This can be mitigated somewhat by storing extra fuel ahead on board. What's more, the fuel costs also get included in your account while budgeting for a boat and its engine. Here is a, a motorboat right here. Uh, when we when I turn on the switch, the power from the uh, battery gets generated to the turbine and the turbine rotates. So the power is over. Thank you. Auspicious morning. Myself, Hasni, along with my companions, Nitika and Sri Vaishnav from Grade 6A. Today, we are here to talk about water purification and its importance. Water purification is a process of removing undesirable chemicals such as fungi, virus, bacteria, and suspended solids and gases from water. The goal is to produce the water that is fit for specific purposes. The purification process involves the removal of several germs, bacteria and impurities by using disinfecting agents. One major purpose of water purification is to provide clean drinking water. It also meets the needs of medical, pharmacological, chemical and industrial applications for clean and portable water. Now we, pure, we pour the impure water And here comes the pure water. Thank you. Good morning. The, 
Today we are going to tell about dancing popcorn. The popcorn dances because of a chemical reaction between baking soda and vinegar. When baking soda and vinegar combine, they disappear and instead create two new things called cerium, acetate and carbon dioxide. In this project, we need vinegar, baking soda, water and popcorn kernels. And the popcorn kernels fall to the bottom of the glass because they have more density than the seltzer water. This dancing popcorn experiment is so fun. Kids can learn about density and acid-based reaction in this science experiment. That's perfect for all. Not giving out anything. Use simple pantry ingredients for this STEM activity. That's, that's quick and easy to set up whether at home or in the classroom. Thank you. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everyone. I am Supratik from grade 5A with my companions. Hi, I am Ishan. I am Rohit. Hi, I am Naksh. And I am Sri Krishna. Today, we are going to talk about water dispensers. Oh. Hey, Rohit. Do you know when the water dispensers were invented? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. They were invented in 1906. Oh, thank you. And do you know how to make a water dispenser out of cardboard? I know how to make a water dispenser out of cardboard. Create a, create a cube shape using the 10 cm, 6 cm cardboard pieces and the 9 cm, 6 cm cardboard pieces. Glue the cover cardboard onto the base cardboard, ensuring a secure connection. Attach the second cardboard piece onto the base cardboard piece, creating lift for the bottle. Water, dis water dispensers can be convenient for busy people on the go. Water dispensers are used in many places such as hospitals, workshops, schools and houses for filling water bottles and etc. The distribute filter water are taste better than normal water. Health filtered water can remove bacteria and other contaminants and prevent headaches and improve complexion. Cost. Water dispenser can be cheap by buying water bottles and water bottles have minerals which are healthy for our body. Thank you. Good morning everyone. Wheel, motor, electricity and computer are considered as biggest inventions since human environment. So let us discuss today about motor. Motor is invented by Michael Faraday. It works on the principle of electromagnetism. Electricity flows through the copper wiring. It creates a magnetic field around itself. Thereby the motor runs. An electric motor converts its energy into mechanical energy. Example fan and mixer. If you want to learn in detail, you can refer this. Thank you for listening. Good morning everyone. My name is KC Andredi and this is my Safari project, Magnetic Crane. Magnetic Crane also referred to as Electromagnetic Crane. These cranes are used to handle and move metals like steel and iron. Magnetic cranes can mostly be found in recycling plants and scrap yards. They operate using a magnetic field that's formed by an electric current passing through the windings around the magnet. The magnet is turned on and off when needed by the electric current. The electrical current travels through an electromagnet that consists of an iron middle and a wiring closed. The magnet picks up the metals and moves them to where they are supposed to go. The magnet is cut off, releasing the metals. Thank you. Good morning everyone. My name is Lake Yasri. My name, my name is Prakanya. Today we are telling about project related to science fair. This project is all about rainwater harvesting. Today, so let us start our project. When the rainwater falls into the container, the container releases the water into another container. In the another container, there are four main types of things that purify the water and they are cotton, sand, rocks and coal. Cotton collects the, cotton collects the microorganisms and dust particles. Rock blocks the large amount of a sand. Take a care. Coal. Coal collects the tiny particles. 
sand collects the tiny rocks. So this is how the project works. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How are you doing? Good, I'm doing good. Thank you. Okay. What are your views on today's Saifari event? It's, it's really nice. I'm seeing some budding scientists here actually. Uh, really like the model on uh, the robo out there. The vacuum cleaner, it is basically a technology which we are paying a lot of money and the way they have done it is like super good. Plus uh, the forensic one which I saw upstairs, yeah, that was like really nice, really nice, very nicely done. what about your daughter's work? She has done a fabulous job on Tylenol. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much sir, thank thanks you. for being a part, God bless you. To you? Yes. Sir. Yeah, uh, being a doctor, how did you find uh, all our scientific exhibits? They are very good. They are very good. The students are uh, very confident in expressing their, I mean, the projects. Okay. Uh, I, as far as I remember, this forensic thing is very good. Okay. And these uh, couple of uh, students, they have explained about microbes and bioterrorism. Okay. All these things they are very nice. They are very confident. Uh, actually, they exceeded my ex expectation. <laughs> Even my son is there. He also okay. did a good job. You can just list your son's name. Uh, he is Ishan Shubankar. He is in fifth grade. A, 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 I mean A section. 5A. Yeah, okay. 5A. Okay, so how did you find his work? It is good. <laughs> he is good. He is okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this is uh, inculcating uh, teamwork also. Yeah. That's right. Uh, that's a great thing. Uh, I expect more and more of these sessions. 100% I think we are looking towards it. Yes. You should, uh, I mean, the school should uh, teach them, encourage them communications and soft skills, which is uh, the future. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your view. God bless you. Okay, please come. We'll take the video. Okay. Um, hello, ma'am. Good morning. Hello, ma'am. Good morning. You can look here. Okay. Ma'am, how was today's event? Excellent, no? Yeah. Any word? Your child, which class is your child in? Child, uh, Riddhika. Fifth class. Okay. Fifth grade, Riddhika. Okay. Excellent. Chala baondi. Okay. Science fair. Under pillal. Manchi party spent je seru. Enta baondi ani ante chota ani pillal under kashta patar gada. Main wala ke health guru inch baag dail sindi. Health cancers. Pollution ante. Yala onda ni. Weather ante ani. Yadi wala kamta science fair lo matta madhe je pair gada wala. Health guru inch je pair. Marm yala onda ni. Yala narch kawali. Yem thina ni ani yadi matta je pair pillal science fair lo. Chala excellent ka ondi. Chala baond. Inki ilant bi mundu mundu inki ekpa betta lani. Chala ashish thina. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. God bless you. Ma'am, you get good morning. I hope you're doing well. Uh, what's your thought on today's uh, safari? Yeah, it's awesome. So actually, uh, actually, I got a personal feeling of uh, enthrallment. Actually, people have put lot of efforts, and it's really very nice to observe such an event. It's too good. So my one word feeling is a feel of serendipity by seeing this event. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're oh, well, thank you. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good. Thanks, madam. How are you? I'm well, sir. Thank you. So, what's your thought on today's safari? Yeah, it's very excellent beyond description. So it, I cannot describe. Like there are no words to describe this. I think like you need to organize this kind of uh, science fairs frequently. Thanks. Okay. Thank you so much, sir, for your kind words. God bless you. You want? I think a video uh, feedback from you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm uh, very happy. Yeah, we'll start the video. Whole okay. team are doing very hard work, very good management, fantastic man. Okay. That's so, really nice. I'm giving the kids. Kids are very good. They are so 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 good. They are Hey. Okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Okay, it's a pleasure to have you today. Okay, how do you find a safari of all the students? Yeah, it's very nice, and everyone prepared very well, and they are explaining properly. And uh, uh, the best part is that everyone prepared very well. Like, yeah. and what the the context and what is the conclusion? Everything they are explaining in a proper way. Okay. So, yeah. which class is your child in? So, my child is studying eighth class. Okay. 
So your child is also a part of it? Yeah, it is here only. Okay, so how did you find seeing your child there? Yeah, it's nice and uh, uh, when uh, we are preparing uh, these uh, uh, last one month back, he told that we have a science fair in our school and uh, and uh, this is the first time he was participating. Oh, okay. After his uh, eight years of his educational journey, okay. he never participated. Every time he was going and seeing only. And this time he said that I will participate and uh, I want to do something. And I suggested what you want. And he suggested, uh, he, he, he came with idea that I want to do something and uh, Ha. So, earthquake. 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 Okay. So I I give and support what you want. I will uh, just buy and I will give and uh, and we three together. I have only one son. We three together. We prepared that till one o'clock of <laughs> night. <laughs> so you put in a lot of effort. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that will give you confidence for him also. So, and he is doing first time. And uh, we just want to see. We will what we can do the best. So uh, we give and support and we'll see what will happen. Thank you so much, sir, for your feedback. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. You can speak normally, sir, in your own respective language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Uh, is the my name is Tirumala. Uh, actually, it is chala bondi science fair. Uh, chala kasta badi pilla landru chala workout che siru. It's a nice. Uh, it's the very knowledgeable and uh, interesting. It's a uh, nice. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Okay. So, how was today's event? Good morning, madam. Good morning, madam. Okay. How was today's event, sir? The event was very good. One more Chana. good and best event conducted by Chana. the Delhi World Public School. Thank you. Ma'am, I am here. 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 I the real one efforts what the uh, students has put that was really good <laughs> and one more thing is that all the each and every science whatever they conducted events no, that was very good by the Delhi World Public School but this event was more informative and especially the support from the teachers and the management was good for the growth and development skills of the students. So how did you find David Denzel? He was always wonderful <laughs> and that, that his skills are only bringing out by the staff of your management and the I teachers, the support of your teachers, he is really make, making wonders these days. I, I think it's also his upbringing, sir. I, okay, I think that's really But uh, one thing I can tell that that what uh, the teachers are giving the guidance for the students, not only as a studies, but uh, these skills are really help out there in the future in their career development. That was really what I really like in this school. Oh, we're so blessed, sir. Thank you so much thank for being you, a part. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> God bless you, sir. The shlok's father? Yes, it's shlok's father. I remember. So, would you like to give a feedback? No. No, no. A video? You'll write. Okay. Good morning, sir and ma'am. I hope you're doing well. Yes, ma'am. Yes. We are doing good. Ma'am, what is your thought about today's event? Yeah, it was really excellent ma'am. I felt like uh, it should be like uh, shared with among all the students so that they, what particular project mean like uh, only that group knows what exactly the project related data. So I want every child to know uh, what 
uh, exactly all projects are uh, uh, per per exhibited here yes. and uh, uh, because instead of parents ch every child should know the uh, uh, what projects are gone here and they get some knowledge with every project here yes. it was very excellent uh, it was really amazing uh, and rocking this time i think it is first time performing this uh, yes, time. it is the first time ma'am yes, uh, yes ma'am it was really helpful uh, to the children to come with their uh, uh, self knowledge and every student here is a scientist i felt thank you, See, thank you so much ma'am seeing this ma'am yes yeah. it was so awesome. you are even saying any feed, uh, the feedback form Yes, ma'am. We will fill. No, you said about the feedback form. And yes, feedback form. I felt like uh, they should be like uh, when we are exiting the room, there should be one feedback form uh, sheet or uh, book to note down sure. for every project. Okay, thank you so much. It was nice. So, anything else that you would like to add? Yes, ma'am. It's really wonderful. I can see the effort the students put, the faculty, and it was fabulous. Uh, unless uh, when I when I was coming, I thought it's a normal one, but after coming here, it's fabulous, ma'am. And this should be a exhibited to others not only the school students it has to be arranged to, to the media as well so that it would be recognized everywhere sure. this is wonderful event and it's been 8 uh, years the first time but it it has to be exhibited outside as well showcasing our talent sure it's 100% i think it's really it decorated very well a lot of efforts been put by the teachers management and also excellent with each and every student ma'am very happy I seeing this time all the uh, the faculty and the staff and the management for their effort ma'am thank you so much for thank your kind you, words thank you, you, thank, you, thank, you. <laughs> thank you thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much